Hello Pangea and welcome to our newest Dofus Time video tutorial, an introduction to the Coriander Dungeon. Are you ready? Let's go! Thanks for the intro, me! With Frigos 3 just around the corner, we're giving those of you still languishing in Chapter 2 a boost up the ladder with a series of dungeon tutorial videos. For this video, we've arranged an interview with the manager of the petrified forest, Coriander. Coriander's lair is suited for teams of 4 to 8 characters who are approximately level 180. Thanks to the modular dungeon system, you'll be fine if you bring along 4 characters, although this tutorial will explain tactics for teams of 8. Just like the last video tutorial, we'll give you information and tips you need to make a successful first attempt at the dungeon, as well as suggestions for which classes can help you finish strong. Right now, let's start with an introduction to the monsters and the spells they have at their command. The Dromanita is resistant to neutral damage and weak to earth. It has 12 AP, 5 MP, and 3 spells. Sporify, which inflicts air damage and steals MP from a close combat target. Marasimus, which is cast linearly at a range of 4 to 5 spells and applies a paralyzing poison. The target will lose life points according to the amount of AP that they use. The poison lasts for one turn. Spork which applies a two-turn effect to the caster that heals and increases damage every time it locks an enemy. When triggered, the damage buff lasts for three turns. The Dramanita's most dangerous spell is the Marasimus. This poison can rapidly drain your health, and your allies may not be able to save you in time. Spork shouldn't pose a problem if you don't try to CC it and risk being locked. Sporify's MP theft can become annoying in some situations, but with some foresight, it's not insurmountable. Fistulina is resistant to water and weak to fire. It has 12 AP, 5 MP, and 3 spells. Septic, which inflicts water damage when stealing life points from a target located diagonally. Mycelium, which inflicts earth damage while stealing life points from the four adjacent cells around the caster. And Sporehole, which sacrifices 10% of the caster's life points and heals ally monsters in a range of 5 cells or less around the Fistulina. Fistulina is not a monster that inspires fear on its own. Its attacks are relatively strong, but no stronger than other monsters of its level, and its spell effects should not pose a great problem. If you're lacking in firepower, isolate the Fistulina from its allies to prevent it from healing, but in any case, you'll do well to eliminate it quickly. The Serpula is resistant to fire and weak to air. It has 8 AP, 4 MP, and 4 spells. Serpulverize, which is cast automatically at the beginning of battle. As long as it's active, and it always is, taking damage from spells forces the Serpula to cast the spell Backroll. Backroll cannot be cast by the Serpula during its turn, but only when it suffers from spell damage. When triggered, all monsters and characters are teleported back to their initial position at the beginning of battle, and the unhealable state is applied to enemy characters for one turn. Sir Pulmonary, which has a range of 1 and inflicts fire damage in an area of effect that is a 64 square line. Sir Pulchitrude, which inflicts air damage and applies a heal penalty to the caster's close combat target. Now, this little monster is not kidding around. Serpula is one of the unique monsters to Coriander's lair, and its nasty rep is tied to two spells, Sir Pulverize and Backroll. With these spells in play, unpleasant surprises can occur quickly and dramatically. Damage from any spell, this includes reflected spell damage from effects like Spell Rebound, triggers backroll. So have your weapons at the ready when facing this monster and don't let it lock you under any circumstances. Treacherous is resistant to earth and weak to water. It has 12 AP, 5 MP, and 3 spells. Spork's Pie, which inflicts earth damage and steals AP in an 11 square area of effect line perpendicular to the caster. Sporcelain, which summons a clump on a square adjacent to the caster. And Sportcullis, which increases the caster's damage for three turns. When the caster is hit by a weapon during this spell's effect, its damage increases further. The AoE for Spork's Pie is, frankly, quite weird, which can make it complex to anticipate. Think of it as the world's biggest staff attack. If you stay in line with the Treacherous while it's in range, you should be okay. Sportcullis can significantly boost the Treacherous's damage, especially if repeatedly hit with a weapon while it's active. And as for the summon, well, it just wouldn't be right if we didn't take some time to talk about the Clump. The Clump is resistant to water and weak to earth. 
It has 4 AP, no MP, and 3 spells. Clumpectomy, which inflicts earth damage based on the percentage of the HP the caster has lost. It increases the erosion debt of all hostile characters located in a range of 5 squares or less from the caster by 10%. Clump and Proletariat, which inflicts water damage based on the percentage of HP the caster has lost. It also increases the erosion debt of all hostile characters on the entire map by 20%. And Clumpfish, which inflicts air damage based on the percentage of HP the caster has lost. It increases the erosion debt of all hostile characters located in a range of 10 squares or less from the caster by 10%. Besides being absolutely adorable, the clump is a peace-loving summon. If you don't hit the clump, the clump can't hit you. It has no MP, so it just sits on the map being super cute. The clump does have a small amount of lock ability that could hinder you if you try to pet it while you're crossing the map. And when attacked, its erosion debuff could make things dicey. So whatever you do, hit the treacherous. Don't touch the clump. The Fungor is resistant to fire and weak to air. It has 12 AP, 7 MP, and 3 spells. Spork Sword, which inflicts fire damage based on the percentage of HP the caster has lost. This damage is applied in an inverse three-cell circle. The spell reaches the entire map except for the three squares around the caster. Wolverine, which increases damage of allied monsters in an inverse three-cell circle for two turns. And Sporigami, which applies a lock and dodge penalty to enemies in an inverse three-cell circle for one turn. While other monsters in the lair have aggressive behaviors, the Fungor is a fearful beast that will run from your characters whenever possible. His main attacks are based on the amount of HP he's lost, so he only becomes directly dangerous when you try to kill him. We advise that you leave him to his coward's retreat until you're ready to make his end, and then make it swift and brutal. In fact, if you have enough unbewitching spells to remove his lock and dodge debuffs to your team regularly, and remove his damage buff to his allies, you could almost forget he's in the fight. The main feature of the fight against Coriander, as opposed to any of the other Frigos dungeons, is that it is the only boss not protected by an invulnerability state. But this lack of protection is offset by a very deadly feature of the battle, the quest and loaded head dice spells that stay active throughout the fight. These spells cause each player to automatically cast a glyph beneath their own feet at the start of each round. This glyph stays active until the character that cast it dies. And should a character start or end their turn on any one of these glyphs, they die instantly. Knowing this, you can immediately tell that when fighting Coriander and his gang, your choice of placement and movement is literally a choice between life or death. You must always be sure you have enough MP to reach a non-glyph square, be careful not to box yourself or your teammates in, and be aware of each monster's movement capabilities. The concepts of dodging and locking are also extremely important in this fight because the monster that locks you is the monster that has already killed you. But before going any further, let's take a look at Coriander's spells and the spells of its summon, the Sporachni. Coriander is very resistant against neutral damage and mildly resistant to all other elements. It has 15 AP, 6 MP, and 4 spells. Reroll, which resurrects a dead ally in the zombie state up to 3 cells from the caster. Loot, which inflicts water damage, applies a dodge debuff and attracts the target three cells. This spell is cast linearly at a range of up to four cells. Its water damage has two parts, a fixed damage hit and a second hit that does damage based on the amount of life that Coriander has lost so far. RP applies a one-turn state which inflicts air HP steal when the target is attacked. It is cast linearly at a range of one to six. XP, which is cast linearly, and summons a Sporachni within three cells of the caster. The Sporachni is resistant to water and weak to neutral damage. It has 5 AP, 4 MP, and 2 spells. GM, which it casts automatically when summoned, and applies an effect to the Sporachni. When pushed, attracted, or transposed, it automatically casts the spell NPC, which then pushes all characters in line with the Sporachni back one square. AD&D, which inflicts a water HP steal, is cast in melee range and pushes the target back one cell. Coriander's main damage spells depend on the percentage of health that the boss has lost to calculate its damage. When approaching this boss, don't attack half-heartedly. Either kill him within a round or two or let him go until you can deal with him properly. If your team is heavy on defensive characters, you might be able to keep him at a distance while you rid yourself of the weaker monsters but it's recommended that you handle him early as he will continue to summon more Sporachnis and can revive dead monsters.
please take note that no matter when you kill the coriander, the glyphs will continue to appear on the ground at the start of each player's turn until the end of the fight. Sporachnies don't have very scary damage spells, but it's their ability to push players that should cause alarm. If they manage to push a member of your team onto a glyph and no one can attract or push them off the glyph, that team member will die instantly when their turn starts. Fortunately, arachnies have something in common with most of the monsters in Coriander's lair. Their spells are largely linear. You must exploit this weakness, especially at the start of battle when there are not many glyphs on the ground. By keeping track of the range of the monster's spells and carefully choosing when to steal MP, AP, or use pushback, you can protect your team from most damage and gain valuable survival time. Whenever you can, use static obstacles to block the enemy and only let them advance one by one. We advise that you start your process of monster elimination with the Dramanita, which is probably the most dangerous of the entire group. Pay attention to its poison effects, use unbewitchment spells to counter them, and kick that drama out of your life. Once a Serpula comes towards you, don't hesitate to rush it and crack it over the head with your weapon. But of course, you must take care not to get locked. A few sword hits are not worth dying for. Naturally, weapons like wands and bows are well suited to this situation, but they're not that commonly used, so be ready to play as a team and move your allies if they get into trouble. If a Serpula is not charging you, it's not a priority to kill it first. It can be ignored while it's far away as long as no one tries to be hilarious and cast Leak Pie on it for the lulls. Push it back if it's getting too aggro. The treacherous cannot be completely ignored because its cuddly clump summons can be a hamper to your movements, so use your best judgment if they're getting in the way. Killing the Fistulina isn't your priority, but keep an eye on how much it's healing. The Fungalore's not a priority either, because as we discussed, it will probably wait quietly in a corner for death. So to recap, watch where you step. The main enemy in this fight are the glyphs. Keep the enemies at bay, don't place yourself linearly to them, and remove their MP, or their AP if you think you can, as they approach. Killing the Dramanita is your first priority, and if you can kill the Coriander next, go ahead. The other monsters, address them as you see fit depending on how much trouble they're giving you. Just don't forget not to use spell damage on the Serpula if you value your life. But leave the Fungalore for last. Sad, cowardly Fungalore. Because this boss does not require a specific tactic to disable his invulnerability, you have more flexibility when building your team. There are only one or two talents that you can't do without. Classes that can obstruct monsters will be a valuable asset, particularly those who can steal MP. Enutrophs and Sedidas are very useful in these roles, but you will also need a lot of placement and movement abilities to prevent disaster. And if you haven't got release, you've got no excuse now. You're 180, you're running Coriander, it's time to break down and get it. Know the range of your spells and your allies' spells if possible, inside and out. It could save the life of your team if they're stuck on a glyph. Map manipulation masters like Sakriers and Pandawas will make your life easier, helping you by chucking monsters away from the team, dragging your teammates off of glyphs, or drawing in monsters that you want to target. Coriander monsters are armed with a lot of debuffs, most notably Dramanita's poison. Don't forget to bring along someone who can unbewitch or even drop an immunity. This is not always strictly necessary, but it can be quite useful. And of course, you will need some brutally efficient weapon tacks to deal with a Serpula, so bring your wands, bows, swords, hammers, and staves. Just watch out for crit fails and back each other up. You now hold the keys of knowledge that will unlock the gates to succeed in Coriander's lair. We hope these explanations will help you and your team advance through this dungeon and on to the next step of Frigos Episode 2, Colosso. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask other players on the official forums. And as usual, if you appreciate having this video in English and want more in this series, don't forget to like, comment, and share it. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.